Brothers and sisters, Brother John, Watchman for that great day. Um, I'm bringing to you some news about Ezekiel 38 and the Gog Magog battle that is now amassing. Only way to say it. This is news of yesterday, uh, October the 22nd. Russia and Turkey deal after Putin and Erdogan meeting in Sochi, which was October the 22nd, which was yesterday. The two sides confirmed commitments to Syria territorial integrity and respect to Turkish security concerns. Confirmed to continue uh, fight against terrorism in Syria. The YPG and the SDF forces, which is Syrian Defense Forces, I'm not sure what YPG is, but uh, withdraw from 32 kilometer deep zone from Syria, uh, Turkish border, and their disarmament. Confirmed respect, uh, confirmed respect to 1998 Adana agreement agreed to follow it. So this is this has been made this agreement between Turkey and Russia concerning what I've just read to you. Syria armed forces and Russian military police will enter uh, Syria t Syrian territory south of the Syrian Turkish border and make sure Kurds withdraw from the designated safe zone um, in 150 hours starting from October 23rd, which is today. The 150 hours is six days and a quarter. So next Monday, we'll have to see what's going on after this weekend. We'll have to see what's going on in the, in the area. But all this is something I'm going to read to you in a second, but I want to read, read this first. Establish joint uh, Syrian-Turkish patrols which can go 10 kilometers deep into Syrian territory. That's an extra 10 uh, uh, miles, roughly, inside of Syrian territory, past the already 20 miles. So uh, established a joint Syrian-Turkish patrols, which, which will be Turkey and Syrian uh, forces working together to um, uh, enforce this. All YPG and SDF, which is Syrian Defense Forces, uh, withdraw from Manjay and Tel Rafat, which I don't know where that is, but confirms commitments to return of refugees, which is the three million refugees that, that will be brought from the uh, southern part of Syria to the northern part, all right, to this new area that is the safe zone, all right, between Turkey and and um, and Syria. Joint mechanism for observation of implementation of this agreement. So it's going to be a joint thing between Turkey and Russia and Syria and probably the Kurds because the Kurds have made a deal with with uh, Bashar Assad to fight for him. So there's a whole there's a whole group of things happening here and the last thing that was confirmed is confirmed support and commitment to the political settlement of Syria of the Syrian crisis. So that's the the movement of the refugees up to the northern part. Remember, Ezekiel talks about the the they're coming out of the north parts. So let me read this and let me give you the connection to why I read all of this to share with you. So if we read. Um, we already know Ezekiel chapter 38 is the war of Gog, Magog, and he's, it's, uh, God says he's against uh, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And uh, he says he's going to turn them back, put hooks in their jaws, and bring them forth. So who's bringing the Gog, Magog war forth? God is. God is bringing these, is allowing this amassing of Ezekiel 38 to happen so that God can be sanctified, can be glorified, can be understood as its only God um, that will turn this war, this overwhelming war, from the from Israel's doorstep. Okay? Because it's it's as it comes down into Israel, and I'm going to read from Zechariah as well, because this is the Gog Magog war. 
Ezekiel 14 is the the essence of the culmination the culmination of that of what we're seeing gathering now all right and this is going to take some time these forces and this uh, everything's going to be somewhat set in place the forces will be in place and then they'll start to march down from the north parts okay but it's going to take some time so I'd like to relate that to you so but here's the Here's the scripture that got me as I was reading this to realize that what is happening is the Gog-Magog alliance. It's the Gog-Magog alliance. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee. That will be all of these people up in this, uh, the northern part of Syria now that have been re uh, uh, repla that have been placed okay up to the northern parts on the Turkish border all right along with the Kurds and whoever agrees with this with all of what's going on here so be thou be thou prepared and prepare for thyself thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee and be thou a guard unto them this is what's going on Russia is guarding Russia is bringing is the connecting uh, nation that is working with Turkey and Syria and Iran okay and is bringing the the refugee problem don't forget what President Trump has just done by taking removing the troops out of Syria all right and we all look at Trump as you know but this is a bad thing I mean a lot of uh, evangelicals Pat Robertson and, and everyone's got something to say about it okay but there's going to be wars and rumors of wars, brothers and sisters. This is the time of that, uh, of this time. All right, we are in those days where these things have to take place. We're in the 70 plus years of Israel the fig tree, so these things are going to take place, and they are now taking place. But as I'm going to show you, and according to how Ezekiel reads. All right, and this is this is um, in verse eight. Many after many days, thou shalt remember be a guard unto them. Um, uh, many peoples with thee. Let me see if it if it'll. No, it's just an interruption. Just an interruption, brothers and sisters. So let it ring for a second. And let me continue on. So it says, after many days thou shalt be visited. Now many days from when? From when they start amassing, right? Amassing the forces. In the latter years. The latter years would be these years, the, the days that we live now. Prior to or in the time of the tribulation period, all right? Amassing is happening now, but the culmination will not happen until the midpoint of the tribulation. So we're very close to the rapture, brothers and sisters, because the midpoint is three and a half years somewhere ahead of us, all right? Days or weeks or months, but it's going to start. It'll be a rough three and a half years from the time that they amass until they're ready to come down, you see? It's, it's a movement. It's, a, it's a, um, an establishing of a force that they, they all agree to, and then they're all allied, and then they all come down at a point. All right, so then if we read further, it says, In the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword that is gathered out of many peoples against the mountains of Israel. So we know where it is. It's in the, in the mountains of Israel, or that's where they're coming over, the Golan Heights and all the, the West Bank and all those areas there where they're going to come from the north down over those mountains which have always been waste but it is brought forth out of the nations and they shall dwell safely all of them so this isn't happening just yet they're not dwelling safely until there's a until there's a peace and safety uh, uh, setting all right right now they're they're somewhat peaceful and safe but they're not without um, uh, the possibilities of, of having to go to battle and go to war right now. In fact, that's what they're worried about with Iran at the moment. Um, then it says in verse 9, Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm, thou 
shall be like a cloud to cover the land. Think of that, brothers and sisters. How many men, women, uh, men, and how many men and and uh, uh, armies? How much of the army? How many armies and, and peoples and movements of vehicles and all that will be like a cloud? Think about that. In that sense, I think of it as being the sixth trumpet, which is the 200 million man army coming out of the Euphrates, right? Which is at the time just before the two witnesses are killed, which is at the midpoint of the tribulation, okay? And it ties in, all this timing ties right in together to be this particular war that is not really a war at all because it's coming down from the North Watch because God is bringing it to show himself strong okay, on Israel's behalf, in the land of Israel. So as they cover the land, thou and all thy bands and many people with thee, these are the peoples from Syria and from Kurd forces and all of the others, the Persians and all these Libyans and all this are coming down from the north part after being amassed, okay. That's what all this is, is doing. It's a 500 mile uh, stretch of, of territory all along the Turkish border that's 20 miles in, at least 300 miles uh, uh, wide, and then 20 miles deep. And all this is, is in, in an upper part or northern part of Syria. So it's a massing, it's a staging area. So what we're seeing is none other than the staging of the, of the prophecy of, of Ezekiel 38. So thus saith the Lord, it shall come also to pass that at that same time, and this, this is so interesting because it talks about in Daniel chapter 12, at that time, Michael stands up, and it will be a time such as never was uh, since there was a nation. And at that time, at that same time, and it says here in, this, in the reading, it says, and at that same time shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think evil thoughts. All right, an evil thought. And thou shalt say, I will go up, and there's another whole section of this that talks about going up against the unwalled cities. But, uh, I, you know, relative to Israel, if you look at Israel, everything has a wall. All right? And so unwalled cities, it doesn't really seem to fit Israel. As far as I, I'm concerned, I'm, I'm seeing the way this is, uh, this from, from verse 10 on down to, like, 13 where it talks about Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish they're all seeing that this this is an invasion and that they're asking have you come to take a spoil and it talks about cattle being in the midst and I do believe Chuck Missler had had, had pointed out that um, it's very possible that this is not Israel at all this area here the midst having much cattle and goods and gold and silver uh, it would seem like the United States, and so it was just a conjecture. I remember by by uh, by uh, uh, Chuck Missler, <laughs> but but it was interesting, an interesting thought, just the same. So therefore, in verse fourteen, therefore, son of man, prophesy and say, God, uh, say unto God, thus saith the Lord, in that day when my people of Israel dwelleth safely. So it's a it's a time. Uh, during a time of peace, all right, there's a peace treaty that comes, right? There's this, there's a thing that uh, the seven-year tribulation starts, but then three and a half years, there's a, there's a certain amount of peace, uh, uh, right? And the Mashiach comes and all this. It's a relative time of peace, uh, and they're going to be dwelling safely. Israel will be dwelling safely because their Mashiach has, has come, all right? And wars and rumors of wars all during that time, but right up to the midpoint. And in that day when my people of Israel dwell safely, thou shalt not, uh, shall thou not know. So to see, it's the time of them dwelling safely. So it's right at the midpoint. They've been dwelling safely for roughly three and a half years now until the midpoint comes where the Antichrist that had made the seven-year tribulation, the seven-year covenant, and he, at, the regular, at the midpoint he breaks the covenant, all right, breaks an agreement, and... It's at the time when this no, when it's known that this is going to happen, okay? Because they have been living in relative peace and safety, and thou shalt come from the place out of the north parts, and thou and many people with thee, all of them riding on horses and great company and mighty army. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel, 
as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days. See the latter days, the end times, the times from midpoint to end, latter times of of when Christ would return. And most people still think that it's seven years and then Christ returns at the end of seven years. And I've got, in my studies, it's, it can only be because of what Jesus had said for the elect's sake, he would shorten those days. Otherwise, there'd be no flesh left. This is all part of, at that moment of time, Revelation 12, 12, when the woman is fleeing, and it, and it ties right into Zechariah 14, okay? Zechariah 14, the, ye shall flee into the, uh, into the valley. It says ye shall flee three times, or twice. Twice it says ye shall flee into this valley. And the valley is called Azazel. And Azazel means a place prepared. So, this is the days, the latter days, the latter days of that seven year period. Daniel chapter 12, 11 and 12 kind of gives you an idea that after this abomination is set up, and it will be 1,290 days, which is 30 days more from 1,260. So it's right after the midpoint by about a month. After the two witnesses, whoever they are, whatever it is, it's a time frame. The time frame doesn't change. The two witnesses are cut off, killed, overcome. And the one that has the uh, ability gets to... The, the, the Antichrist gets to overcome and kill them and then he has been given power in Revelation 13 5 to continue for three and a half more years okay so it's the midpoint and we're looking at this is the time that in Zechariah 14 that the Ezekiel battle is now culminating all right at the time of this uh, Antichrist finally uh, being revealed, all right, as far as uh, he becomes the son of perdition, all right, um, because at first the Jews will accept the one that comes in his own name, and this one that comes in his own name will lead them for a period of three and a half years to the midpoint until he is found to stand in the temple, profess himself to be God, then those true believers, the true uh, Messiah desiring Jews will have their eyes opened and they will see that this is just a man and that you know he's some will some will still follow this this antichrist of course many will and take the mark and the whole thing but this is relative to the midpoint and to the time of them seeing you know who this guy really is all right he's revealed to them as not god okay because they don't believe a man can be God, otherwise they would have believed Jesus Christ was God. So, bottom line is this. If we go to Zechariah 14, and it talks like, it says like this. So, behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. So who's doing it? God's doing it. And what does it say that God says? He says, He will bring them down from the north parts. All nations, all many peoples with thee. It's the time of the 200 million man army coming out of the Euphrates, coming across the Euphrates, whatever terminology you want to work. The kings of the east, all of them coming against Jerusalem over the hills that have always been waste, over into Israel. All right? And what's happening then? And the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravaged, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people, which is the remnant, shall not be cut off. The remnant shall not be cut off from the city. They're still connected somehow. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against the nations, against those nations, as when he fought in the day of battle. This ties right into Michael, uh, the archangel, standing up in Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And all those found written in the book shall be delivered. Okay? So, then shall the Lord go forth and fight against the nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet, whose feet? Our Lord's feet. Jesus. His feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, 
which is above, which is before Jerusalem on the east side, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst. Now listen, what we got going on here is an earthquake. It shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half toward the south. If we go back here and realize Jesus' feet just touched the Mount of Olives. Let's read in Ezekiel, in the Battle of Ezekiel, okay, which is really no battle at all because God's the one bringing him down. Bringing him down. He's going to put hooks in their jaws and bring him down from the north parts. And they're going to come to take a spoil, right? It's going to look bad. They're already entering into the city and, and coming over those mountains that have always been waste. All right? In, in Zechariah 14, right? In 14.2. But over here, in chapter 38 of Ezekiel, Verse 19, for in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath. What's Revelation, what's Revelation um, 6 say? 6, 17, the wrath of the Lamb, right? Wrath of the Lamb. Let's go there. 6, 17. Yep, for the great day of his wrath is come. There it is. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? It talks about in verse 16, And said unto the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. Okay? The wrath of the Lamb. What's going to happen when Jesus Christ's feet touch the Mount of Olives? An earthquake. Is that not the wrath of the Lamb? Because it's not just the... This, this is God. His feet are touching the Mount of Olives in the form of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we're coming back with him according to Zechariah. All right? But in Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 19, it says, in, For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. So that the fishes of the sea, why is it shaken in Israel? It's, it's shaken the whole world, brothers and sisters, but it's shaken in Israel. So the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the birds of the, uh, the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are on upon the face of the earth, all the men that are upon the face of the earth, not just in Israel, the face of the earth, shall shake at my presence. Who? Why? Jesus just touched down. His feet touched the Mount of Olives and it splits open. And that means the creator of all things, Jesus Christ our Lord, has returned. And that is felt a worldwide. That is felt worldwide, brothers and sisters. That is felt worldwide. The splitting open of the Mount of Olives will be felt worldwide. Jesus Christ touches his feet to the Mount of Olives. Who comes back with Jesus? We do. It says in verse 5, chapter 14, verse 5, And ye shall flee to the valleys. Who's fleeing? Revelation 12. The woman. The woman flees. Where there's a place prepared for her. Revelation 12. Bear with me while I turn the pages. Yep. Yep. And the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. The angels are coming down, brothers and sisters, to pick all the elect, all right? The, the, those, those that were in the time of Jacob's trouble at the time are, the, are becoming the remnant that is leaving, that is going to go to a place prepared for them, right? Where it says, um, verse 14 in chapter 12, and the woman were... And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, times and a half a time, from the, from the face of the serpent. The serpent cast out of water out as a flood, and the woman uh, that might cause her to be carried away. And we know that he doesn't get away with that. The earth opens its mouth. The earth helped the woman. 
and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Why? Because the Mount of Olives just opened up and it's been felt worldwide. There's an earthquake that is opening up, okay? That's opening up the earth. And this woman is told she's going to flee. All right, and so it says, ye shall flee, verse 5, ye shall flee. This is the woman, the remnant. Ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Ezel, which is a place prepared, and it's presently unknown. That mean, that's the word Ezel in the Hebrew, in the, in the Strong's word. A place presently unknown, proximity to Jerusalem, close by, and yet ye shall flee like ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah king of Judah. And the Lord God shall come and all the saints with thee. That's us, brothers and sisters. That's us coming back with Jesus Christ at the time of the Mount of Olives opening. All right? And the world feeling the whole world. It tells you right there in Ezekiel 38. It says, so that the fishes of the sea, the fowls of heaven, the, the beasts of the field, all the creeping things that creep upon the earth, and all the men, all the men, all the men that are upon the face of the whole earth, of the earth, shall shake at my presence. Who has just returned? Jesus Christ. That's the wrath of the Lamb. That's Revelation 6, 12 through 17. They, they cry out to the mountains because they're falling. This is the whole earth-shaking, brothers and sisters. This is the earth-shaking return of the Lord Jesus Christ along with us. And at that time, these, uh, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and His Christ, meaning us. Our Lord Jesus Christ and His anointed, because Christ is Christos, it means anointed. So it, the, when he returns, this earthly kingdoms, these earthly kingdoms of the earth will have been come, become the kingdoms of our Lord, Jesus Christ, and his anointed. Okay? God bless you. So this is all great things to be looking forward to, and, and the rapture is close, and we're seeing right now the formation of, and the amassing of the peoples that will take part in the Ezekiel battle. And day to day to day just keeps bringing more and more information of how this is uh, building. And it won't be long before we're caught up, before we're out of here. Because this is about to take about a three and a half year march. This is not just going to be, they're not just gathering it today and this week and then next week and going to hit Israel. This is something that's a, that's a big, major uh, plan that, that takes time so that it doesn't really, uh, Israel is not, they're aware of it, but they're, but they're not going to see the movement until that movement starts happening, you know, if that makes sense. That will happen after they're at peace, okay? Remember, they have to be at peace before Gog of Magog realizes they're living at peace, all right? So that... that that causes us to have, well, there's got to be something, an agreement signed, and there's a midpoint of that agreement where it's, where it's taking place, and then we know that Daniel chapter 12, 11 and 12 shows us that from the time after the sacrifice and the abomination is set up, it's a certain amount of days, that counts from the whole total, it's 1260 plus another 30 days is 1290, plus another 45 days would be 1335 days. That is the blessed day. That is the day that the Lord would return. And for those of you wondering, well, then what about the second part where, where the devil's been given the 42 months? The, the interesting thing is Gog and Magog comes again. They, uh, the devil was let out after the thousand years um, to gather together from all the uh, port parts around the world, uh, Gog and Magog once again, and to deceive the nations for a little season or for a short, short time. So that time, though it was given to the devil at to to uh, to continue for forty and two months. 
that 42 months is cut short. That would be the 1,335 days, all right, which is shortly after the midpoint, after the 1,260 days, by 75 days, that's when Christ would return on a blessed day. And believe me, you cannot have a blessed day when the devil was just given power over the whole earth for 42 months, three and a half years, okay? So that's where it's cut short, as Jesus said. If it were not that he uh, cut those days short, there would be no flesh left. So that's important to keep in your thought, even if it's just a study that you will do. He's going to cut it short. That's what Jesus said. For the elect's sake, he will cut those days short. So it's a three and a half year period, followed by a 30 day period where the abomination is set up, followed by another 45 days where the devil's doing what he will, which is just to exterminate as many as he can. And then Jesus would have to come back because if he was allowed three and a half years to exterminate as many as he can, he would just pull all the you know, press all the buttons and just kill everyone on earth. All right? So, bottom line is this. He's looking to take as many as he can. He's going to do that. Um, if you're not born again and filled with the Spirit, the chances are you're going to be left to go through something that's just horrible beyond your nightmarish dreams that you can't even imagine. So, today is the day of salvation. The Bible says, ask... The ABCs are, you know, accept that you're a sinner and believe on his name, that he, was, uh, that he died on the cross, raised on the third day, and call on his name, and you shall be saved. So, God bless you all. Brother John, watch me for that great day. Hope that was of interest to you. And uh, take your earbuds out if you got them in. I'll blast the shofar once for you guys because I know you love it. And hopefully we'll hear it soon. bless you all. Have a good day, brothers and sisters, and keep watching, keep looking up. We're close.